My brothers and sisters, sometimes ignorant people communicate with us. They try to attack us so that we respond and react. And when we react, they can do something that would be harmful to us and blame us for it, to word it simply. What we need to know, these are called al-jahilun the ignorant ones, the people who it's not worth talking to. Now, many times when a problem happens and when you have people who are toxic, sometimes initially you might want to try with them at the beginning to see to what level that toxicity is. You might want to see if you can help them because we're always taught to help people. But if they are affecting you negatively and you're becoming stressed about it and it's affecting your life and you can't sleep and it's really bothering you, there is no harm in minimizing, almost cutting them off and in some cases cutting them off completely. So we need to know this because I want to heal. How can I heal when people keep attacking me? How can I heal when I'm facing the same challenges from the same people all the time? I need to get out of this. You know, sometimes it's a family member, sometimes it's a parent, sometimes it's a child, sometimes it's a sibling, like I said, a family member, sometimes friends, associates, these people. At times, if you really are being affected and your mental well-being is affected, you may need to take a step or two back or more. So Allah Almighty tells us, Surah Al-A'raf, verse number 199, Allah speaks and addresses Muhammad Sallallahu He speaks to him and says, you know what? Forgive them. Uh, continue instructing or enjoining that which is good. And turn away from those who are al-jahileen. And what we said, jahil is an ignorant person. One who is toxic. You know, it doesn't mean the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was told not to talk to them. But he was told to turn away from them. Meaning, don't take seriously their negativity. Not at all. Because they know, deep down, you're the messenger. They know what's right and wrong in most cases. But they're either arrogant, or they're deceptive, or they're corrupt. So, that is the message to Muhammad Wasallam. Another verse comes to my mind of Surah Al-Furqan, where Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, وَإِذَا خَاطَبَهُمُ الْجَاهِلُونَ قَالُوا سَلَامًا The good believers, the, the ones who are worshipping the most merciful. When the ignorant address them, the only words they have for them is peace. Peace. It's okay. They swear you, peace. They accuse you, peace. They say something bad about you, peace. Slander, peace. They try to rile you up, as we would say, peace. MashaAllah, that's the way. Leave it in the hands of Allah. Don't worry. Allah is the greatest. Don't lose your health because of words that someone else has said. When we were young, we used to say, you know, sticks and stones would hurt my bones. And then we would go on to say, but words wouldn't do anything to us. That's not true. Words hurt a lot of people and actually cause tremendous pain to a lot of people. Let's change that. Let's go back to what Allah is saying. When these people address you, you don't need to actually become so emotional about what they've said. It's okay, discount it. They're showing themselves and their own level, not yours. They're, they're stooping to a very low level. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us. So we need to remember this issue about the jahilun, that the ignorant when they address you, and we're using the word ignorant, but it refers here also to the toxic people, those who are uh, whom a relationship with them is very unhealthy. Minimize it. Assalamu alaikum wa alaikum as -salam. That's it. Not more. Because you need to protect yourself. You need to heal. If you don't do that, you will not be able to heal. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, not make us from those who harm others. And this is very important. The question is, you, are you not making someone else's life difficult? Do you not harass someone? Are you, not, are you not maltreating someone? Think about it. So as much as I need to heal, I need to make sure I'm not causing pain to others so that they can heal and I can be helped. What's the point of saying I'm struggling, but you are making others struggle? That's a very interesting factor. 
So if you want ease, you need to create ease as well. That's how it would be. Uh, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us in Surah Al-Anfal, verse number 26, about how Allah converts the fear that a person has in the heart. Sometimes Allah can convert it to a sense of peace and calm. So if we look at the verse, Allah says in verse number 26, Remember the time when you were very small in number and weak on earth and you were fearing that perhaps you would be overwhelmed or overpowered by, you know, the enemy. And what did Allah do? Allah says, فَآوَاكُمْ وَأَيَّدَكُمْ بِنَصْرِهِ وَرَزَقَكُمْ مِنَ الطَّيِّبَاتِ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَشْكُرُونَ Allah gave you a respite, protection. And He helped you with His help. And He sustained you. He gave you sustenance so that you can be thankful. So every time we're in a situation where we are fearful of something, Strengthen your belief in Allah. Keep going. Don't give up. And Allah will convert that fear into a sense of reassurance. He'll protect you. He'll help you with His help. He will sustain you in order that you, are, you become thankful. So once you've achieved, don't go back to your bad ways. Many people, when they're anxious and they're worried, they turn to Allah. Once the worry is gone and the anxiousness is gone, Oh, they continue as though nothing had ever happened. So Allah is warning us to say, you know what? We helped you in order that you should give thanks. Are you going to give thanks? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen us all. If you look at Surah Al-Anfal, uh, just two verses down there, two, three verses later, in verse number 29, Allah tells us, you know, when you develop the correct relationship with me, by fulfilling the commands, abstaining from prohibitions, living on very high, a high level of morals and values and character and conduct, we will automatically give you the ability to distinguish between right and wrong. We'll give you the criterion. We'll give you the ability to distinguish between light and darkness and so on. Uh, you'll have a clear sense of judgment and you will know what's right and wrong from Allah because you have a good relationship with Allah. So Allah says, verse number 29. Allah says, O you who believe, if you develop taqwa, if you develop the correct relationship with Allah, if you're conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He will grant you the ability to distinguish furqan, and he will forgive your sins, subhanAllah. And he will expiate your sins, wipe them out and forgive you, subhanAllah. So you need to develop the correct relationship with Allah in order to be able to distinguish right from wrong. What we learn from this verse is when you don't have the correct relationship with Allah, when you're indulged in haram, in sin, when you've dropped your levels of morality and your values and your character and conduct, when you're not worshipping Allah correctly, when you're not interested in the deen, then you will have the opposite of Furqan. You will think what's right to be wrong and what's wrong to be right. That happens a lot. Sometimes, you know, you may be surprised. How does this person think like this? But you know what? Allah's blocked their minds. Allah's blocked their eyes. And Allah's blocked their ears. Why? Because they are not interested in developing a relationship with Allah. So Allah says, it's okay. We don't need them. They need us. Now, we don't want that to happen to us, but we see it happening. People can't think as clear as daylight and they're thinking the other way around. You know, they'll argue about something that's shining so bright in front of them, but they just can't see the light. So Allah says, why? Because they don't have taqwa. They don't have a relationship with us. They haven't developed that relation. So please, my brothers and sisters, we need to heal. We want hope. That can be achieved. We've been saying it almost every day by developing the correct relationship with Allah. Develop a relationship with the word of Allah. Try to adopt it. Improve yourself as a person. Your level of morality and your value should be going higher every day, not lower. Many people are lowering their guard. 
And subhanallah, it's amazing how we see people turn to the deen on one hand and others who were on the deen turn away. That's Allah. Let's pray that Allah Almighty forgive us, protect us and grant us the comfort and heal our Thank you so much for listening to the short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you so much for listening to the short message. I pray that it has increased you in a little bit of motivation and hope. And the same applies to all of us. Jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.